On the 21st of August, two rivals at very different phases of their careers are due to collide in the most anticipated bout of 2021. For one, it could be the final showing of a panoramic career that began more than a quarter of a century ago. Outshining the best in multiple eras, Manny Pacquiao's breathtaking journey through numerous weight classes has transformed him into a global icon that's transcended the sport and beyond. And his unwavering desire to continuously seek out the most dangerous of obstacles has now led him to perhaps his most perilous opponent. His alias is titled The Truth. A harsh indictment served to a multitude of opponents on his way to becoming the unified WBC and IBF champion, and widely considered as the number one in a division overtaken by a new generation of welterweights. But a truth that both Errol Spence and Manny Pacquiao are acutely aware of is the magnitude of their upcoming clash in just a few weeks' time. And in this video, we take a detailed journey through their careers as a reminder of what's at stake in boxing's latest pay-per-view extravaganza. The date is the 23rd of June, 2001. The IBF super bantamweight champion, Leilo Ledwaba, is scheduled to make the sixth defense of his world title. IBF super bantamweight champion of the world. And having already stopped four out of his previous five challenges, the South African is considered one of the best operators in the lower weight classes. His opponent tonight, a fresh-faced Filipino, acting as a last-minute replacement. Pacquiao. Pacquiao. Say Pacquiao. 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 I'll get it right. Pacquiao. But, unbeknownst to Ledwaba, the 7-to-1 underdog standing before him was on the verge of taking the entire boxing world by storm. Talk about getting old in a hurry. I think this guy just hit so hard that Ledwaba is totally on the defensive. Almost a resignation in the eyes of Ledwaba. That's a TKO victory for the very impressive Manny Pacquiao. The unexpected annihilation of the IBF super bantamweight champion served only as a brief pit stop for the Filipinos' quest for world dominance. This is some prospect, Bobby. To me, he's every bit as exciting as Prince Nassim Hamed. He really is. He can punch. He can take a punch. He's aggressive. And he loves to fight. Before long, an opportunity came beckoning for a more astonishing feat, one that would elevate his growing reputation to new levels. The reigning featherweight champion of the world! Marco Antonio Barrera, a Mexican great, and universally recognized as the featherweight champion of the world. Barrera says that he sees in Pacquiao his own younger, hungry warrior self. But whatever his accolades and honored place amongst boxing's elite, he would quickly find himself victim of the sport's newest featherweight star. Hard left hand, straight on the button by Pacquiao, down goes Barrera. There are probably some in this arena who didn't really know who Manny Pacquiao was. Now they know as Pacquiao tries to go ahead and finish Barrera. No. I don't care how proud he is. There's no way a great fighter should have to go through three more minutes of this. New featherweight champion of the world, Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. 11 rounds of unfiltered violence would see the end of one fighter's reign and the beginnings of another. Manny Pacquiao is a storm. Juan Manuel Marquez hasn't ever seen anything like that. Who has? Goes Morales. And 
the gray part of Morales holds up, but his legs go again. Right here. Down goes Marquez on a straight left hand shot. Perfect shot by Pacquiao. The years between 2003 and 2008 saw a remarkable run in which the Filipino would accrue world titles in three additional weight classes. And new champion from the Philippines! And his dominating display against David Diaz would not only signal his growing all-round boxing ability, but also cement his status as a five-division world champion. And if the question was, how good could Pacquiao look? in his first fight as a lightweight, the answer is better than you might have believed. Manny Pacquiao, by now, was a locked-on future Hall of Famer. But his quench for greatness would hit new heights when he decided to make an audacious attempt at the biggest challenge of his career. Yeah, no, both guys are legitimately great, but it's like a handicap match, Dan. Why Oscar, again, who is like five, ten and a half against a guy who's five, five-ish? What type of shot will people give Pacquiao? So for him to go over there and beat Oscar De La Hoya, not only would it be an upset in mainstream boxing, but around the world people would see an upset, but the people of the Philippines believe that Manny's going to do it. You know, Pacquiao is, is regarded as number one pound for pound, but he's a much smaller man. What went into your decision-making process? As was to be expected, the matchup drew criticism from most of the boxing world. Pacquiao, who up until recently had spent his best years at featherweight, would be testing his expanding skill set against a bigger foe who had won world titles as high as middleweight. But as high as the risks were, so too were the rewards. A fight of this magnitude against a crossover superstar in Oscar de la Hoya had the potential to propel Pacquiao into unprecedented levels of fortune and fame. The event was billed as the dream match, and the two fighters took center stage on the 6th of December, 2008. They call this a dream fight, a good dream, bad dream, exciting dream, let's find out. For much of Pacquiao's career, the reputation of a fierce, carefree slugger followed, always obliging his opponents in risky punch exchanges and allowing his raw speed, strength and power to prevail. But for the first time in his career, the Filipino began demonstrating his growing ability to instead box intelligently on the move. He takes a straight left hand and a right hook from Pacquiao and seems intent on retaliating, but already Pacquiao shows you that he wants to move in, move out quickly. Move in, land a flurry, move back out, out of Deloia's range. And the quickness of Pacquiao is a factor in round one. Round by round, the former middleweight champion was being sliced down with an endless supply of left-hand leads never missing the mark. By the midway point of the scheduled 12 rounds, Pacquiao was starting to sense the waning resistance of De La Hoya and began unleashing the aggressive whirlwind attacks that made his career so successful. Manny Pacquiao is annihilating Oscar De La Hoya. Pacquiao is making De La Hoya look old, slow, ineffectual. Some of us wonder whether Manny Pacquiao would become the Henry Armstrong of this era. Right now, he's looking like the immortal Armstrong. Glory and a lot of money in Oscar De La Hoya's past, but he's getting beaten up here. Beaten and bruised, the golden boy could fight no more. We're going to stop it. Better we stop it. Let's, let's finish it. That's it. Let's go. Right it's over. Over. Manny Pacquiao Oscar has beaten Oscar De Loya. And it was the right thing to do. Manny Pacquiao, once again, had destroyed the odds. And his triumph this time round would send shockwaves across not just the boxing world, but the entire sporting landscape and beyond to become a global icon. And the pride of the Philippines again holds his gloves aloft. Number one pound for pound fighter in the world. Something so illogical, so unusual, that you simply couldn't have imagined it would happen.
For the next three years, the world would delight in the world's best fighter, at the absolute peak of his powers. During this time, the Filipino Phenom went on to win an additional three world titles in three more weight classes. His devastating knockout victory over the light welterweight champion Ricky Hatton was followed by an electrifying win over the WBO welterweight champion Miguel Cotto. And just a year later, his achievements hit unprecedented levels when he brutalized Antonio Margarito for the WBC light middleweight title to become boxing's first and only eight division world champion. And now winner of his eighth world championship, the fighting pride of Serengani province, Philippines, Manny. But in a perilous sport where triumph sails ever so closely to ruin, Manny Pacquiao's story cannot be told without the admission of one of his greatest adversaries. Seven years prior, the pair met for the first time as featherweights to give birth to one of the most hotly contested rivalries in recent times. And over the course of three bouts and 36 rounds, very little separated the two. Hell of a fight. I'm calling it another draw. Though Manny Pacquiao would emerge the winner in two out of the three bouts, the boxing world demanded a fourth and final showdown to settle unfinished business. Let's get ready to rumble. The fight would signal an end to not only their personal saga, but also the Filipinos' reign at the top of the sport. As for the first time in their rivalry, Pacquiao had Marquez's newfound punching power to contend with. Pacquiao would quickly recover to return the favour of his own and seemingly be on his way to finally stop Marquez for the first time in four fights. But the gritty Mexican, bloodied from the nose and gasping for survival, miraculously found the opportunity to prove one of boxing's oldest proverbs, a wounded prey is a dangerous prey. Pacquiao's extraordinary reign at the top of the sport would meet its end in the form of an equally vicious right hand, and for the first time in his 17 years as a professional fighter, found his career in serious jeopardy. During the period in which the Filipinos' downfall was taking place, a brand new journey was beginning to fester elsewhere. A 22-year-old amateur by the name of Errol Spence Jr. was being hailed as Team USA's standout talent in their campaign for the 2012 London Olympics. United States of America, Errol Spence. Errol Spence from Long Island in his very first Olympic Games tournament. However, the pre-tournament turmoil in the country's boxing program blighted the youngster's preparations and his gold medal dreams were dashed in the quarterfinals. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner by score of 16 points to 11 in the blue corner, representing the Russian Federation, Andrei Zemkov. 
But whatever the failures in London, Errol Spence's style and attributes were better placed in the professional circuit. Expectations of him being the future of US boxing still remained, and three months after returning from the Olympic Games, Spence made his professional debut. Yeah, no doubt, Barry. This is a, a three-time U.S. national amateur champion, and he's only 22 years old. You, you talk to the other Olympians, they all tell you he's the hardest worker on the team, and there's a very, very big upside with Errol Spence. I like the way he, you know, he's aggressive. He sits on his punches, gives you angles. He takes his time. I think he's a complete package, and I think he's got a very bright future in the professional ranks. Spence had another one with the left hand. Comes right back, and Garcia is down. To the bound, your winner by KO victory in his professional debut, Errol Spence Jr. A successful start to his pro career and a steady, traditional route through the paid ranks followed. Two good body shot right Stop. to the head, that's it. Loading up the left hand. Look at this guy, you talk about relentless good word, Dave, because Spence just won't stop throwing bunches. Despite Spence meeting all requirements with his performances on fight night, it was instead his exploits outside of competition that enhanced his reputation. Whispers from gyms across the country told sparring stories of cracked ribs, bruised faces and knockouts behind closed doors. But it was also in boxing circles where your legend was born, where people started to talk. Hey, you gotta see this guy, Errol Spence. He's yeah. putting guys out in training. However, it wouldn't be until the rumors of sparring a certain Floyd Mayweather that the media began really taking notice. Spar Floyd? Yeah, definitely I'd come out there. You know, this this is a dream to spar, you know, somebody as caliber as Floyd the top. Mm -hmm. I went out there and basically I didn't go in as a spar partner. I went out there like he was my opponent. And the story is you blackened his eye, true? Oh, I never seen his eye. But you wouldn't argue with the story. I mean, I don't know. I never seen, I, I didn't see his eye black at all. I didn't see it, but that's how the story goes and that's what people say in the gym. Now, backed by elite level sparring and a pre-existing knack for exchanging violent blows, the young American spent the next few years building a steady stream of dominant stoppage victories. Errol Spence's rise coincided with the launch of Premier Boxing Champions, a new promotional outfit designed to introduce a new generation of boxing talent to mainstream US audiences. And impressive back-to-back -back stoppage wins soon created an ideal moment for Spence to demonstrate his abilities against a former world champion. And no! Three fights prior, the once WBO light welterweight champion Chris Algieri had already shared the ring with the great Manny Pacquiao. Despite suffering multiple knockdowns, Algieri did manage to see out the full 12 rounds, and now an opportunity for Spence to do one better was snapped up with both precision and ruthlessness. The statement had been made, and the rest of the welterweight division was being put on notice. I'm number one contender to Kell Brook, so Kell Brook know what time it is, you know, we gotta get in the ring and fight. The intentions were clear, and another emphatic knockout victory over Leonard Bundu made Errol Spence the official mandatory to the IBF world title. You made the motion after the win, you want a shot at that title, what's your message for Kell Brook, the current title holder? 
You know, if he's not going to fight me, then he needs to vacate and I fight somebody else. But I definitely want that IBF title shot this year. At the time, the welterweight division was split into four different title holders. Errol Spence's most recent victory granted him a shot at the talented Briton, Kell Brook. And still, the undefeated IBF welterweight champion of the world. The fact is, all these Americans, we've seen it before, Jeff Lewis did a lot of hype in it. You know, he's never ever fought an animal like me. I'm looking forward to chucking some chocolate brownies at, at Spence. The only one truth in this fight is Errol's going to get beat. Yeah, you fighting somebody your size now, huh? Yes. Huh. Fighting somebody your size now, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you ain't smart. You're, you're, not, you're not fighting a 5'7 Sean Porter. You're not you're fighting not a different. little Kevin Busy, eh? Yeah. Nah. Who, who, what? Yeah. Fun dude, 50-year-old. Yeah. It don't matter. He went 12 with Keith Thurman, didn't he? So what? I got him out of easy. Chris Algeria got him out of easy. That. Well, stand in the middle of the ring then. Don't run. Come on then. Don't run. I won't stand in the middle of the ring. I'm going to hold you to it too. I will. Stand in the middle of the ring. We'll I'm going to hold you to it too. We'll see. We're going to see. The fight took place in Kelbrook's hometown of Sheffield, with 27,000 of his fans in attendance at the Bramall Lane Stadium. Boxing fans, are you ready? It would be Errol Spence's first attempt at elite level, and in an incredibly hostile atmosphere. But undeterred by the occasion, the American weathered Brooks' early storm to eventually gain a firm foothold in the fight. Leaving nothing to chance, Spence's chopping assaults forced Brook, with a damaged eye, to retire in the 11th round. A new potential superstar in boxing was now brewing. And the mission to expand and dominate the rest of the welterweight division was underway. During the early stages of Errol Spencer's ascension to world level, Manny Pacquiao was making preparations for the most lucrative fight in boxing history. It was a clash that took seven strenuous years to produce. And if the boardroom negotiations alone weren't difficult enough, it would be the dangers of the ring in and of itself that almost scuppered the fight from ever taking place. He scores a colossal right hand to knock Pacquiao home. The devastating events of December 8th, 2012 left Pacquiao's career at a desolate juncture. And we have to ask, will Manny Pacquiao ever be seen in the ring again. Doubts poured as to whether the Filipino legend, already a veteran of 17 years, could ever compete at elite level again, with some analysts even pleading for him to retire. But you have another full-time career back home as a congressman. Do you want to fight again? But after almost a year of self-reflection and healing, the once pound-for-pound -pound king made his highly anticipated return to the ring against former world champion Brandon Rios. Fuck that. One Mexican knocked him out. This Mexican American is going to retire Pacquiao. Everyone's expecting a dust up. When the dust settles, do we have the end or the rebirth of an era? And over the course of 12 rounds, it would appear that a careful, more astute version of Manny Pacquiao had emerged. The hastiness that cost him victory in the fight prior was replaced by constant movement, manipulation of angles and precise counterpunching. A routine points victory had been secured. But if the interest in the Pacquiao vs Mayweather fight was to be rekindled, a more distinct statement was still required. Freddie Roach built Manny Pacquiao as a knockout machine and he wants to see him doing it again, even though Manny hasn't had a knockout. 
for several years now. A fifth fight with Juan Manuel Marquez proved too elusive, and a shot at an alternative form of redemption instead presented itself. Boxing revisionists will often attribute Pacquiao's fall from grace solely to the exploits of his great Mexican rival. But officially, his incredible win streak was ended six months prior to the Marquez defeat, and it came at the hands of the man aptly nicknamed the Desert Storm. And no! Though the entire boxing world regarded the official proclamation a dubious one, Timothy Bradley did follow up with a separate feat that Pacquiao himself couldn't accomplish. And so with Marquez's scalp in one hand and the WBO trinket in the other, the undefeated American presented a worthy challenge that, if overcome, could restore faith in Pacquiao's chances against Floyd Mayweather. The contentious defeat to Timothy Bradley had been successfully avenged, and after a quick tune-up defense against Chris Algieri, Pacquiao was back to winning ways. However, the Filipino was now reaching almost six years since last achieving a knockout victory. The dynamic attacking machine that ignited intrigue for a Floyd Mayweather fight in the first place seemed long abandoned. You know, part of what people loved about Pacquiao, even as he rose in weight, was that he was a risk taker. Now, that backfired against Marquez, and it's probably smarter against these bigger fighters to back off if you have the fight already won. But he's not quite the same guy, neither in terms of his speed and explosiveness, nor in terms of the kind of mentality he brings to the ring which was one of a finisher, and one that made us imagine that we're watching one of the very greatest fighters who ever lived at his best. He's not that guy anymore, but he's still pretty damn good. It was hoped that the dream Pacquiao versus Mayweather matchup would pit two of the most dominant forces in world boxing at their peak levels. But the prolonged back and forth and wasted years served just a shadow of the spectacle promised many years ago. Whatever the commercial success and broken box office records, nothing could be done to prevent a dull, actionless 12-round affair in which Mayweather secured a points victory. A disheartening reminder of one of the many ills that plagued the sport was candidly delivered on its grandest stage. But the financial objectives of the game can never be understated. Manny Pacquiao had successfully participated in the richest fight in boxing history, and with Mayweather's imminent retirement and little public interest in a rematch, the former champion was left to ponder his remaining role in a sport he had already achieved so much in. You know, we talked about he wants to validate taking the mantle, being the future of the sport, wiping out the welterweight division. Hey, let me tell you something. This guy is special. More punches. He's, he's a bigger guy. Oh. And there he drops Lamont Peterson in round five on the left hook. Yeah, you know, the ring 
is said to reveal the truth, and his nickname is the truth, and we found out how real he really is mm -hmm. against a guy like Lamont Peterson. Yeah. But Errol Spence Jr. has all of the tools to be the face of the sport. 27 years of age, entering his prime, unbeaten. He does all of his real talking inside the ring, and he dares to be great. He wants to be the last man standing. He's a throwback in that regard. Because he loves to fight, and you know, he's the one of the reasons why 2017 was such a great year for boxing, and I think 2018 is going to be just as big. The thrilling world title victory over Kelbrook in the summer of 2017 certified Errol Spence's place amongst the welterweight elite. And a quick tune-up victory over Lamont Peterson then qualified him for the first pay-per-view event of his career. Errol Spence Jr. wants to be bigger than the belts. Mikey Garcia says, I want to challenge the best, and Spence is the best. His opponent, the undefeated Mikey Garcia, was an immensely gifted fighter in his own right. But it was clear from the outset that his selection was a calculated one. The lightweight champion was required to jump up two weight classes for a box office fight that Manny deemed a mismatch. 21 by a knockout. And to nobody's surprise, Errol Spence dominated proceedings with a straightforward 12 round decision. Errol Spence in round nine, landing 51 punches, most by a Garcia opponent in 20 fights. Good the deliberate choice of a passive, undersized opponent did little to impress hardcore observers. But by tapping into the Mexican American fight audience, it did prove a shrewd business move to not only hit respectable pay per view numbers, but an opportunity to showcase Errol Spence as more than just a fighter that overpowers his opponents. And I showed that, you know, I have a jab, a one-two, um, my boxing IQ is high, and um, I have a lot of different things that I bring to the table except just, you know, pure brute strength. With his box office presence slowly developing in the welterweight division, attention could now be turned to a fellow title holder. I think the question Sean is trying to ask, who do you want to fight next, and would it be him? If I don't get that Manny Pacquiao fight, I would definitely take the fight with Sean Porter. Sean Porter, a two-time world champion in possession of the WBC belt, brought with him a physical challenge that, perhaps in the fight prior, was lacking. And on the 28th of September at the Staples Arena in Los Angeles, the two combatants squared off to create one of the most action-packed fights of the year. Lately I've been living like I can't take a loss. They ain't wanna help me, that's what made me a boss. You can't kill my confidence, I think I'm the man. We don't give a f that's what they don't understand. A successful unification against Sean Porter now put Errol Spence in prime position at welterweight. Two out of the four world titles were in his grasp, and the mission was underway to capture the third in a high-profiled mega-fight that would propel Spence to the pinnacle of the sport. But for such a plan to exist, it would require his future opponents displaying the courage to turn ruin into triumph. Four years earlier, Manny Pacquiao conceded a points loss to Floyd Mayweather on the biggest stage of his career. And despite a brief recovery period with victories over Timothy Bradley and Jesse Vargas, he suffered another setback against the Australian Jeff Horn. Manny Pacquiao has been upset. And I thought Pacquiao won the fight. If you go by the real rules, the markers of Queensberry rules, who lands the cleaner punches? The decision may well have been a questionable one, but it demonstrated a visible decline in Pacquiao's standing in the sport. And in response, the Filipino restructured his team, split from his long-term promoter, and joined forces with the same boxing advisor as Errol Spence. As the founder of Premier Boxing Champions, Al Heyman's volume of welterweight talent allowed him to form a monopoly in the division and in his latest recruit, recognized the highly venerated position he still maintained in the game, 
and immediately reintroduced him to pay-per-view status with a bout against the brash Adrian Broner. This ain't Nickelodeon, this is pay-per-view. Y'all got me fucked up if y'all think I'm about to lose the Manny Pacquiao, man. I'm about to beat his motherfucking ass on God now. Fuck saying? Floyd, man. No disrespect, but he ain't, he ain't, fi he ain't fighting Floyd. Absolutely. I'm about to beat your motherfucking ass, man. You worry about Floyd. Rematches and fleet. Got to get past me first, big feet, motherfucker. I got the whole hood with me. H O O D. Back to winning ways in the eyes of the mainstream public, an opportunity for complete atonement was then presented in the form of Keith Thurman, the WBA welterweight champion of the world. This is your boy Keith one time Thurman and still champion of the world. One time became two times baby. Also a product of Al Heyman's shrewd management, Keith Thurman's rise to the top of the welterweight division came in direct alignment with Errol Spence Jr with the two forming a long-term rivalry that one day in the future was to be settled in a high-profiled unification. Errol Spence, he calls himself the truth, but if you were raised like I was raised, you know that there's a lot of false prophets. It could then be argued that Pacquiao, now 40 years of age and almost a decade older than Thurman, had been brought in as a ploy to serve the customary passing of the torch to a new generation of welterweights. Everybody's talking about how fast he is. Made Pacquiao T-Rex arms. Bop, bop, bop. This is my moment and this is my fight. He's fighting for my belt. But like many greats of the past, the rare, elite abilities that the former pound-for-pound -pound king possessed appeared to have stood the test of time. In an astonishing display of skill, power and grit, the 40-year-old veteran took the undefeated record of an elite welterweight and was now heading into a remarkable fourth decade as a world champion. To match the Filipino's heroics, Errol Spence, two months later, succeeded in his unification against Sean Porter and his preference for Pacquiao being his career-defining opponent seemed set. All that remained now were the formalities of fight negotiations, and the WBA, WBC and IBF championships would be on the line in one of the biggest fights in boxing. Now to the video you saw first on the CBS DFW social media channels. A violent crash overnight as a Ferrari flipped on a Dallas street. In that car was Errol Spence Jr. He's the boxing champion from DeSoto. Spence survived the crash but is in rough shape at a Dallas hospital right now. And Ken, the video of that crash makes it look unsurvivable. Driving north in his white Ferrari at a high rate of speed when he lost control right here. In the aftermath of the crash, an outpour of compassionate messages from the boxing world followed. A young, talented athlete's career plunged into serious jeopardy. But the concerns first and foremost were reserved for Errol Spence's health. Police say Earl Spence Jr. was not wearing a seatbelt and was ejected from the vehicle. Witnesses told police Spence was conscious when he was taken to Methodist Hospital where he has broken teeth among other injuries. Despite suffering multiple facial injuries, Spence miraculously escaped without sustaining any broken bones or fractures. And ten months on from the career-threatening incident, he announced he would return to the ring against the former two-weight world champion, Danny Garcia. Everybody expected me to you know, take the last opponent, but I'm not going to you know, go backwards. I'm going to just go forward and fight the top guys that I've been wanting to fight since I was like 14, 15 and up, since I won a title from Kell Brook. If any levels of trauma from the horrific car crash remained, Danny Garcia on paper had the experience and toughness to reveal it. But Spence, with a sharp and textbook performance, 
relayed all concerns to deliver a straightforward 12-round decision victory. Meanwhile, his highly sought-after target, Manny Pacquiao, was reaching almost two years since his outstanding win over Keith Thurman. A handful of contestants sat in the running for his signature, but it was a crossover mega-fight with MMA superstar Conor McGregor that remains the most alluring for the full-time senator. The lucrative boxing match seemed all but set for the summer of 2021, until the Irishman's shock defeat in the octagon forced a change of plans. And wasting little time, Manny Pacquiao turned his attention closer to home for a more daring assignment. Announcing one of the most highly anticipated fights in recent years. After all these years, Manny Pacquiao still doing it at the age of 42. How do you, how do you size up this matchup? It kind of dropped in our laps out of nowhere for the great Manny Pacquiao to keep it going at the very highest level at age 42. He rose to prominence as a one-armed knockout artist, touched the highest peaks of the sport as a boxer puncher, and now, in his twilight years, is galvanizing audiences as the crafty counter-punching veteran. An ageless wonder of the boxing world, Manny Pacquiao's encounter with Errol Spence marks his 41st World Championship fight. Why have you decided to choose Errol Spence, a guy who's undefeated champion in his prime? Living up to the proclamation of the new face of US boxing is no small task. But Errol Spence, in the four years since becoming a world champion, has handled the responsibility with both honor and ruthlessness to now be in touching distance of fulfilling that prophecy.